Let's talk now to Steve Baker, former Brexit Minister and Vice Chair of the European Research Group, Group of Conservative Backbenchers. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. I mean, you were listening to to Laura. That sense there that Downing Street is willing to call your bluff. Uh, well, I try never to have a bluff to be called. Um, you know, I put on the record that almost 80 colleagues were prepared to protest vote against Chequers on some amendments, and that is uh, an accurate number. I was very grateful to Matt Holhouse during the campaign when he put out a tweet confirming that while people rolled their eyes when I'd said I had 100, Oh, about 130 I've eventually came out. So I always try to be accurate on the numbers rather than have a bluff to be called. So, you know, we are in a position where, as we roll forward, colleagues will not tolerate a half-in, half-out Brexit. So on, on that point about the numbers, so you are sticking by the assessment that you think you have 80 MPs who are prepared to vote against the Prime Minister on a Brexit deal based on checkers. So Laura was very insightful on this. She said, uh, I think she said it was uh, previous indications, and that is the case. So I, I did a concrete canvas of colleagues when it was amendments to legislation and came up with a number nearly 80. Of course, the government are going to whip this vote extremely hard. But what I would say is that the whips would be do, doing in, incredibly well if they were to halve the numbers. And my estimate is that there are at least at least 40 colleagues who are not going to accept a half-in, half-out checkers oh, deal, or indeed a backstop that leaves us in the internal market and the customs union, uh, come what may. OK, um, we'll talk about that in a moment. And so so you're saying 40. I mean, of course, one of the, one of the uh, uh, issues, and Laura pointed to this, is that we don't know what the wording of the motion that the government would put uh, before the House of Commons would be. And it... It, the wording may be something that is slightly different from whatever the final vote is that is agreed, which might put some of those you think are with you in a in a dilemma and make them less willing to defy the government. Well, Michelle, of course, you're absolutely right that we are awaiting the detail of exactly what we're going to be asked to vote for. And of course, that is um, a matter of great interest for, for everybody. But I don't doubt that every possible technique is going to be used to, to sow doubt in colleagues' minds uh, and to encourage them to vote with the government. But, but in the end, it, it, the EU is not entitled to split the UK and it's not entitled to constrain how we regulate our economy and govern ourselves after we leave. And if the UK faces either possibility, then we must in the end be willing to say that it's a bad deal and you know no deal is better than a bad deal it's been said many times and therefore we would need to be unafraid to go forward without an agreement but it it would still be a deal wouldn't it under which we would leave the EU which is why the view of someone like Douglas Carswell who was one of those very high profile conservative defections to UKIP um, back in the day is important and he has said I hope that some of the more excitable Eurosceptic backbencher MPs don't one day look back with regret at turning down a Brexit deal that allows for incremental divergence in a way it's similar to what Michael Gove has said about not letting the the perfect be the enemy of the good. Well, I'm glad you raised Douglas. Um, I, I hope he won't mind saying that he and I had a conversation yesterday, and I hope he won't mind me saying that uh, I said to him that he is still a participant in all this, despite not being an MP, and you, you have really backed that up. But look, in, in the end, the, the, the bottom line here is we need to see the legal text of the withdrawal agreement and see in particular exactly what kind of backstop the government is entering into. Because if the backstop leaves the whole of the UK in the internal market of the EU together with the customs union, then that is indefinitely because it seems likely that the trigger to leave might be handled, handed to the EU. Well, if that were to be the backstop, that would be so obviously unacceptable because it would leave us in a position worse than EU membership indefinitely. And, and, and that is not something from which incremental change would be possible. You, you would either be in those arrangements or escape them and the trigger would be in the hands of the EU. They'd have no incentive to take us Steve out. Steve Baker MP, thank you.